Today we'd like to talk about mentoring relationship between a mentor and a mentee and what's the difference between a coach and a mentor or even a special teacher and a mentor. So it's a very important topic that I've been asked a lot. Today I'd like to answer all the questions which pertain to this kind of relationship between um, a wiser and a, a, sometimes older, a more mature person or a, a more mature individual versus somebody who's looking for some answers or some kind of uh, path. So who is a mentor and who needs a mentor? Okay, who needs a mentor is, well, as you advance in your life, especially in a path, you are sometimes stuck and get lost in the process and or you are not growing anymore or you're saturated so you feel like losing yourself or you don't have a purpose anymore or something uh, to that uh, end. Now, we need a mentor. I needed a mentor and I would say having a mentor is really a very important and a very significant uh, opportunity in life. Now, a mentor is somebody who is wiser than you, more advanced in the path, or who is more skillful in that specific line, or it can be a person who is more equipped in dealing with life's solutions, or more advanced in philosophy or principles guiding life. So somebody who can bring you into a quantum leap of consciousness that will push you to a breakthrough or to create some game changers in your life. Now, this can be done by a life coach also in a way, but there will be a difference between a life coach and a life mentor. And maybe we can talk about that later on, remind me later on. Now, once you need a certain jump in your life, or once you are really lost and looking for the next big steps, a coach is probably a good start to consult, but eventually, if you want a broader, a deeper, and more dimensionality into your search and answers of your search and your questions, you need a wiser person who is more advanced in the path or in that line of, uh, of events than you. So a mentor is one who can advise you, who can give you a direction, who can give you uh, a bigger insight on making better decisions. So who needs a mentor? Almost everyone who wants to advance their path needs a mentor. And I tell you, without my mentors, I would have grown slowly in more maybe linear fashion or maybe incremental growth. But once you have a mentor, you will expect an exponential growth, a disruption in your life, and something that is greater than what you expect. And uh, somebody who is ready would be probably the best candidate because you need some degree of readiness to be able to attract a mentor or find a mentor. Or even you found a mentor, it does not guarantee that the mentor will be interested to mentor you. There's a difference. And are there different kinds of mentors? Yes, as there are different, li different kinds of co coaches, there are different kinds of mentors. Let me give you some example. Or I would say there are maybe eight kinds of mentor. There's kind of political mentor, there's an educational mentor, there's an entrepreneurial mentor, and a business mentor. There's also the creative mentor, an artist and uh, artistry and a uh, musicality uh, path or music path. There are also mentors in the scientific division or in the military uh, life or there's also the institutional and mentors and so on. But all in all, I would say the practical mentors that you can really find are one, a maybe a life mentor, something that will give you a general outlook of life in a broader spectrum, in a deeper way, and that would interface all aspects of your life, can be a life mentor. Another mentor is like a strategic mentor, somebody who helps you develop a strategic plan for your life a game plan for your life that is deeper than just a business plan. Something that has connections to the entirety of your life to create wholeness in your life that is more strategic. Or it can be a strategic mentor in regards to business. 
or in terms of psychology and uh, a relationship and so on. So that's a strategic matter. More strategic planning and looking forward in the future, developing a bigger game plan for yourself and so on. Now, another kind of mentor is a tactical and specialist mentor. Somebody who can detail things and see all the solutions of puzzles in your life and in one go they can look at your those answers to your puzzles and that is because they use intuition they use um, I would say a higher levels of intelligence a bigger uh, dimensionality of perspective and so on so uh, it can be a very specialized mentor a tactical mentor which is in one field if you have saturated in your life to a certain degree in your own specializations or your own profession or in your own line of uh, work or line of, uh, of uh, a vocation and you need to go deep into it and even widen the horizon about your specializations you need a specialist mentor something that specializes in your field who has been there and done it all in that line of work so you need that specialized uh, mentor another mentor that you can see is a, a spiritual mentor Somebody who can bring you from religiosity to spirituality. Somebody who can bring you a deeper understanding about your spiritual life, your awakening, about your soul and all kinds of ingredients that makes you more spiritual. So that will bring you a little bit more enlightened life and a more, I would say, spiritual uh, lifestyle and a more enlightened lifestyle. So you have a spiritual mentor not all spiritual teachers are spiritual mentors. Sometimes spiritual teachers from a lineage can only give you a lot of teachings and knowledge base, uh, say coaching, but they will not give you the deeper aspect. They will not push you to the level where you can really maximize your potential in your enlightened life. So not all spiritual teachers are mentors, but most of them can do mentoring because they have also gone through a process of maturity and seasonness and that they will tell you what they have done. Now, another thing that has not been known before and not really realized and recognized is an esoteric mentor. An esoteric mentor is rare to find because they are not even named by books. They are not uh, labeled as, as a position of power and authority. So I would include today the esoteric mentor. An esoteric mentor is some more advanced than spiritual mentor of that. They include hidden laws, uh, divine principles that are not well discussed, or esoteric or so-called occult knowledge that are not usually known by most spiritual teachers, gurus, or even life coaches, or even other kind of strategic and business uh, uh, mentors. They know and understand the laws of karma. They know they understand the laws of economy, the laws of cycles and rhythm. They know the different laws of the universe and they understand how the world works. They understand how life is governed by many laws, health governed by many principles. And there are many tenets that guide different kinds of paths. So they usually bring you to a higher path and advancement in your human intelligence using specific esoteric principles and esoteric psychology and esoteric sciences. So once you're looking for a jump from a more enlightened state before you get saturated to a very high state, you need an esoteric mentor because these are the missing, uh, there are missing principles and spiritual philosophy and psychology you have not understood in your life that is the missing piece before you can jump. So to go to a disruption, sometimes a spiritual mentoring program will not suffice anymore. A yoga and meditation and being a vegan, being a, a studious person, diligent meditator uh, it, are not always enough to jump to a level when you're already more advanced. So to advance to a higher level, more than just being enlightened, more than just being a nice person, or more than wellness and well-being, is to become more esoteric. The word esoteric means hidden or secrets or unknown to normal human uh, intelligence or in common knowledge. It's an uncommon information and knowledge 
that are known by, by masters and the more enlightened initiates of humanity. So when you say esoteric mentor, they use many other laws and principles and secret knowledge that are not usually used by other teachers or by their mentors. And they are above uh, just being spiritual, being more enlightened. They give you a certain boost of uh, wisdom and, and information and experience that will cut short your time searching. That's why they are very esoteric or they are hidden. And they are not easy to find. And also they are not looking for students unless you're qualified, they will recognize that you are ready, ready. There's such a saying, uh, there's a saying that says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. There's also a saying that I have quoted that when the disciple is prepared, the mentor will also, the esoteric mentor will also make themselves available. So you have to ensure, make sure that if you're looking for esoteric mentors, you should be ready. You should have a certain kind of degree of hunger and thirst for, for higher development and for higher service, that you need those extra esoteric laws and principles that makes you qualify to find or to be accepted by an esoteric mentor. So you see that there is a general mentor or life mentor is about life, simple life to a more intelligent life. Then you have also the strategic mentor, which if you need mentoring for strategies to advance your life, to advance your business, to advance your career, to advance your, your pursuit to, to bigger things, you need a strategic mentor who will look at the strategy and look at the bigger plan of your life and bring you to, to a more abstract principle so that you can look forward to your game plan. A tactical mentor and a specialist mentor is somebody who specializes deeper and longer, more experienced than you in that line of path that you are being mentored. So you can have a mentor in sports, those who are really graduated as super athletes, super martial artists, or who have been wiser as a teacher and they started to graduate as a mentor. So not all teachers are mentors. Mentoring already is the graduation of teaching because you have gathered enough information and wisdom and experience that you choose them and then you can impart them and accelerate the development of those mentees or those subjects. All right, so I think we clarified also that we have a tactical or specialized or specialist mentor, which in the same line is wiser and more experienced than you in that line. Then you have the spiritual mentor, who is also a mentor in line of being becoming spiritual. Okay, so becoming spiritual is a line of path that brings you a more enlightened life and a deeper experience in the spiritual uh, in the spiritual path. Now, you can also say that the uh, esoteric mentor is a little bit more advanced than a spiritual teacher or a spiritual mentor because they will give you the missing pieces on your self-mastery puzzle which you need to add into your spiritual training or spiritual mentoring so that you can go deep into the subject matter of your search and you can widen the horizons and then you can put facets in the dimensionality of your perspective so that you have a broader more holistic approach to that path you have chosen all right so usually when you say mentors it is about the path it's about a line of uh, action or search and it is a, a more integrating and synthesizing development which is different from coaching all right so we have itemized many aspects of mentoring and uh, some kinds and styles of mentors so the thing is, uh, why do you search for esoteric mentors? It's because you have saturated in that line of spirituality or enlightened life level or your professional path, your life path, that you are now even having a dark night of the soul experience. You're starting to get bored. You're starting feeling like meaningless about what you're doing. You're starting to collapse the meaning of what you have achieved in life either wealth, relationship, your accolades, your, your successes. So you, you feel like starting to be empty, then you need a more advanced mentor who will identify things that you have not seen or even things that your mentors have not seen or have not fathomed. 
like when Mother Teresa had Dark Night of the Soul, even she had a few mentors, I think three or four mentors, and nobody was able to solve her deep yearning for the love of God because she said that she's lost the love of Christ and she doesn't feel anymore the love of God. And she sees in the dark night of the, her soul. And they told her, keep on praying. It's part of the suffering of Jesus that you're feeling. If you are Christ-like, you tend to feel these things. But they don't know that she had a dark night of the soul. So her spiritual mentors, who are priests, are able to just say that that's part of your spiritual becoming. That's part of the loneliness of the path or something like that. But if she had meant, been mentored by me as an esoteric mentor, I would have identified all her symptoms and qualify her as one of the aspects of the dark night of the soul and I would be able to bring her to navigate her path to bring her out to the light and to a higher level of development before she died. So she needed an esoteric mentor and she died without solving and realizing the dark night of her soul. So it's not enough to have a spiritual mentor or a spiritual teacher or a life mentor. You need sometimes in your life a certain degree of awakening or I would say discovery where only an esoteric mentor can qualify to give you the missing pieces of the puzzle or to give you a new esoteric law that can satisfy your gaps or give you an esoteric philosophy or psychology that will give you a better understanding of where, what you're experiencing. So that's why an esoteric mentor is not much sought by most people because they don't even know their problems. They don't know that their spiritual apathy or being lost or severe depression is not physiological or chemical or hormonal. It is something that is the soul's induced spiritual awakening that only an esoteric mentor will be able to look at as a symptom of development and saturation from your old evolutionary curve. All right, since we have introduced this topic today, is there any question that you want me to answer about this uh, mentoring or this esoteric mentoring? Any questions so far? Yes? Master, I was wondering, in this current day and age, we do have a lot of coaches. We have fitness coach, sport coach, executive coach, life coach. So how do we know or when do we need a life coach versus a mentor? Okay, that's usually a good question that is asked by a lot of people because they're confused. They have a life coach who is always talking to them every day, a lot of talk therapy that's uploading all your issues in life and that's called coaching. Well, that is a, a top therapy and you didn't need a mentor to do that. You need somebody to always upload your emotional problems, your anger, your bouts of, of fear and so on. So you need a therapist to do that. You're not a mentor. But if you find a mentor who can, who can elucidate the problem and give you the solutions immediately, then you will not waste your time for another year of top therapy. But some people have executive coach like business people who wants to be ahead of their curve and, and be on top of their game. Sometimes, for no better word, they are looking for a coach or executive coach for executive reasons and for their executive functions in their businesses. So most people would like an executive coach to guide them, navigate their change and also their, their business shifting or the paradigm shifting and so on. So you can have an executive coach to do that. A lot of people also have a wellness coach, fitness coach. Even when you go to the gym, you have somebody who will teach you how to develop your biceps, your triceps, how to increase the broadness of your shoulder, how to develop your six pack faster. And there are many other fitness coach uh, who can develop certain parts of your, your physique. There are also Pilates coach, there are also curve coach, there's also yoga coaches and so on. So the word coach has been used as a generic term for somebody who can help you improve yourself in those lines. So that's also good. That's a good start. And uh, also we have uh, sports coaches to become very good at your athletic feats, a chosen field like basketball or, or uh, soccer or something. You can be a very good athlete, but to go from that 85 to 95 to 100% performance 
you need a, a sport coach to bring you there and push you and make sure that you're doing what you need to do and make sure that you have a homework to prepare yourself for the next step. So you need an, an athletic coach or sports coach. And it is so necessary. When I was helping the uh, US Olympic team in Texas, the, the diving team, uh, the life coach asked me, can you help me make them win over the Chinese athletes? Because that time they were preparing for the Olympic uh, games. And he said, I've tried my best, but for, no, for some reasons they are still smoking and I cannot just tell them to not smoking and they're still like not sleeping well. They're still taking some marijuana or something like that. And in America, you cannot just dictate everything that you want. They rebel against you. And like China, it's more draconian style. They're strict and you have to follow your, your sports coach or you're fired. So I, 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 I came in to help them with the Just Be Alive exercises, the breathing, the navel breathing especially, and mental programming, and how to align their, their zone of performance when they are about to die without thinking, and how to use their instincts and guts to be able to do what they need to do immediately without thinking. So I was the energy mentor, the center mentor that they hired to be able to help the athletes because the sports coach has saturated it, his own strategy to make them disciplined. And so I came in and I, I factored my strategy on the navel breathing, on the synchronized breathing, all kinds of simple things that they can do in between their performance uh, breaks. So, so now, when do you need a coach and when do you need a mentor? I think even you are not as prepared, once you have a crisis, we have a problem, you have uh, some goals to do, like in sports or in wellness, you can always find a life coach or a well, wellness coach or yoga instructor to make them your, your coach for that specific smaller, smaller uh, goals. But when you are more serious and you are diligent, you are very hungry to learn and you want to jump create a paradigm shift in your life, you cannot just employ a life coach because they have also a certain degree of experience that is just a little bit better than you in unfolding the, the answers and questions, so giving you the search questions and coaching you to bring your best performance for a specific field of action or engagement. But a life mentor, for example, versus the life coach, you will be able to bring a bigger perspective a higher efficiency of decision making, a better, uh, a, a deeper aspect, uh, going deeper, a deeper dive into the subject matter, because the experience of the mentor is more profound and more complete than a life coach. So you need a life mentor for that when you are already saturated in your relationship with your life coach and you are not anymore growing, you're saturated yourself to a certain degree and you're falling again in the principle of your dip, you know? So you need a life mentor or you need a mentor to help you bring back that disruption to climb rather than to fall. And usually on your own, maybe you can learn a subject matter by self-studying and you need probably around one year to learn a specific subject, having a YouTube, a book to study, or you attend a workshop. But when you have a mentor, you are compressing the time of learning that you learn so fast by exposing you to many facets of learning strategy and you're able to learn and juice the, the learning experience by the experiential substance and interaction on osmosis with the mentor so your learning curve is shortened and compressed with a mentor compared to a life coach or compared if you are only self-studying a subject matter so there's no replacement if you have a mentor you're soaking yourself in a bigger uh, wealth of knowledge that is more integrated and connected than if you're doing linear studying on your own or if you have a life coach giving you some questions to answer about the subject matter. So there's no comparison if you have a mentor versus a coach. A coach can be linear and answering questions or, quest answering or asking questions to you to unfold the conditions or the crisis. The mentor will immediately know the exact problem and they trick you on that aspect you already know on the first few minutes that this person is wiser, more mature than you, and has extensive background on the subject matter. 
that you're asking. And they have an ocean and a, an ocean of information that you need, which are integrated already and synthesized, not linear, not one point at a time. So your exposure to the mentor for just a few hours might be so much information that you need to digest them for years or for months. What's a life coach is more periodic. They ask you a question, you answer, then you have follow up question, the search questions is asked again until you're the one answering your own problem and finding your own solution. And the homework is usually what they give so that you can find it yourself, not them giving the answer. So the mentor can both pose the question and give you the insight of the answer simultaneously and you use a philosophy to look at the whole thing. You need a, a deeper psychology to understand things than the linear knowledge base uh, correctness. So where the life coach might elucidate how you find a correct solution, the mentor will be looking on the right solution because there's wisdom in the solution. There's a wisdom in the decision. There's, there are principles guiding the solution and the strategy. All right, so that's the difference. So when you need simple things, you, you don't need a mentor. They are more expensive for time and substance and experience. And if it is just a silly question you don't have, you just go to Google and you find the Google as your coach. There's so many answers there already about and things that are known. Usually a mentor will give you an answer that is not usually typed yet or not usually in the book. Or if it were in the book, like in the Bible or in the scripture, it has not been interpreted by you properly. That's why they will tell you the same statement from the Bible or from the Quran or from uh, a scripture and they will explain it to you applied to your issue or tangential or at least uh, tangent to issue or I would say perpendicular to your, to your, uh, to your question. So you can see the contrast. So that is uh, how I look at things, uh, a life coach, and when do you need a mentor? When it's a serious matter, when you're very hungry to know and the coach cannot give you any more. Because not all healers are coaches or not all healers are also mentors. So do not make a healer always a coach unless they're trained to be a mentor or to be a life coach because they have more integrated a way of asking questions and they have uh, patterns and templates for you to understand situations or a crisis. All right, any uh, question? Master, when does one need an esoteric mentor versus a normal mentor? So do when, I, yeah. Do I need to replace my old life coach because now I feel I need an esoteric mentor? So do you need to replace your old mentor or your coach to another coach or mentor or to an esoteric mentor? When do you need to shift to another mentor? Now these are all things that usually most people are guilty to execute because they say, oh, I don't want to abandon my old guru because my old guru is so nice to me and they bless me to become a better person. Well, I tell you, if you are guilty all the time, whatever you do in life, you will always suffer through guilt. Or you have to put things into proper perspective. If the guru is enlightened, if the guru or the mentor is wise, they don't mind you going to other mentors or to other coaches if you need those specializations. But you have to be away from gullibility of always replacing your mentor and your coaches because you are not happy with yourself. And you think that the guru and your mentor will make you happy all the time. Do not attempt to think that the mentor will make you happy. Sometimes the job of a mentor is not to make you happy, it's to make you sad so that you'll be happy after you solve the problem, right? Or they prick you with a Zen joke and then you cannot forget that question, that koan, that there's no answer to it. And then after one year you go, it's, I don't have the answer. Then at least you've been focusing. Okay, so for most people, they stick with their life coaches for some time until they exhaust all the knowledge and the experience with that life coach or that sports coach, if it were sports, for sports. And if you have a spiritual guru who is also your mentor in the spiritual mentor, then you stick with that mentor until you're starting to feel that you are not getting the right answers or you're not getting the right experience or then deepening your development because the guru is also a good guru to a certain level. 
Not all gurus are very advanced. There are gurus that will dispel the darkness at a certain level. Once you exhaust that, you need another advanced guru for your advancement. Because some of their teachings only fulfill a first initiation or to advance a mainstream humanity to more advanced mainstream humanity. Some gurus are up to that mark and their job is just to make you more awakened to a certain degree. But beyond that, they are not taught how to teach beyond that. Or they don't have labels for that because they are more mystical gurus or mystical mentors. Once you are advancing yourself very fast and you have exhausted all the teachings they have because you probably have a healing guru who is your mentor, but they do not specialize on esoteric psychology or esoteric science or third eye. Therefore, you do not feel guilty when you leave for another school to learn third eye or esoteric psychology because it's not taught in the school. Do not de de delay your development because you are guilty because you are not loyal to that school anymore. No, loyalty is not about not taking another advanced class. That is only affiliation. You can be affiliated to two groups for two different reasons. This is your friends in the bhakti path or, or, or devotional path because of your bonding for a long time, that is still your, I would say, affinity. But your next jump will happen here. When you're learning new subjects that are up to your next mark, then you need a mentor who is more advanced than your other mentor, who is giving you now new substance and new teachings that will make you evolve into a new level and initiation. So don't feel guilty to shift your affili affiliation, not because you're abandoning one, you're not disrespecting them if you go to a higher subject. Any guru will even bless you, say, so go for higher learning if you have another mentor who will give you a jump. So when I was a student myself, I had four mentors, and at that time they have different lines. So I studied with uh, a healing guru who, whom I studied to become a healing master. And as I became a master, I was sent to other countries to teach a lot of people and train also other healing masters, myself. But after 10 years, I have exhausted the teaching. I cannot learn any more anything because they are not teaching other subjects. So I have to go and search in the Himalayas and found one, uh, I would say, Taoist, Zen, and I would say a, a, a different type of teacher who is a Shaolin monk and also a Buddhist Rinpoche bishop level and he is also a little crazier than my other mentor. So at that time I had a big ego and I was very strong because I was also a master in martial arts plus I was a public speaker. I won the world contest in public speaking in 1989. So all this ego came to my head and I was looking for somebody to challenge me. My other mentor, the second one before this one, was a, a, a Filipino mystic who is a um, my mentor in psychic development, my mentor in esoteric philosophy, and also in theosophy, and also in Alice Bailey's uh, teachings. So I studied with him until also I exhausted the teachings, and I've studied enough, and he told me to go and search for more. Then I found the other teacher who is a bigger ego than mine, so he, he clashed with me until I said, okay, I want to learn from you, I will dissolve my ego and let me be a student. So then he became my mentor in many things about dissolving the ego, which is more difficult than learning healing. And from there, I was able to do that after a few years. Then I also found my other mentor, who is the immortal, who is transferring some of the powers for immortality and longevity and all those kinds of more esoteric yoga and more of training you to be foodless, breatharian, to be able to stand the pressure of cold, and without having to surrender and so on. So I had a, a deeper training on the control of the body, control of the mind and so on. So those mentors were different subject matters, but they have the wisdom for each topic and this different path. So I collect all of them, use them, and become a mentor for all the things they have taught me and I even improve it to a level where either mentors from the invisible plane and other masters are ready to give me new teachings after I exhausted all the physical mentors and two of them died already and 
of course, I'm finished with their schools because I was affiliated there. At first, I was very guilty to go to another school, but then the other schools teach me esoteric, which is not taught here. And then from here, I was taught how to dissolve my ego, which I needed at the time. Then I needed another substance of immortality and longevity strategy. And so these all are combined that I was able to write many books without referring to many books, except my downloads and some small scientific investigation and so on. So at, at first you are guilty to shift because you think you are not affiliated anymore to your old school. In the inner world, you can always be connected. It doesn't have to be always physical. So if you shift your life coach to another life coach because you have exhausted the techniques and the strategies and the insights of one, because he's as good as that. He is not as evolved as what you're looking for because sometimes you can be more a more advanced soul and you have a life coach that is less advanced. For a certain initiation that is relevant to you when you are still reviewing your initiations, when you're still reviewing your development from your past lives, you can be uh, reviewing the mainstream humanity and then a little bit more advanced mainstream. So you need somebody of that caliber to remind you the mainstream humanity level of intelligence. But as you evolve, and you are more evolved than the coach because you are just reviewing your development from the past, you might need another level life mentor to give you a challenge to go from mainstream to first initiation. So now you like this because there's more input that deals with that initiation or requirement of development. That's why you feel more aligned to this new life mentor because that is the next strategy you need for your next promotion. And then afterwards you need another promotion. And if you were more advanced than the second life mentor, therefore you're looking for a more advanced spiritual mentor who will challenge you to evolve to a higher level because you have reviewed your first initiation as the first and a half. Now you are given another curriculum and syllabus to evolve to the next steps where you are reviewing your past initiations. So it happened to me, I was reviewing many levels of initiation very fast in many, many years. In just one decade, I was reviewing already many initiations. And so I needed more mentors to give me the key for different openings and different portals for me to open more initiation requirements. And after I exhausted the physical mentors, I need to go into the invisible world mentoring. So I had many mentors from the higher beings that are giving me, feeding me with new information that is not available in books yet, that are not available in the scriptures, not available in normal teachings of theosophy or as Bailey or shamanism or religion. So I have to have other mentors who are now intuitively connected to my learning process. And so that is another mentor that is more advanced than physical mentoring. It's even your higher self that is being mentored and you download intuitively the next steps. That's why you have to keep on moving. The more advanced mentors do not really mind. They're not jealous. At the high level, they're all working together. So how can they be hating one guru to the other? That is only us, very mainstream humanity, that are separative because we are always thinking that my mentor is better than your mentor, you know? So that comparative energy is not necessary at the higher level because they are always replacing each other. Like I can be getting mentees of high initiates from other ashrams to come to me for learning the energy substance that I provide. After that, they return back to their ashram or they can go next to the next routine of their development. So in the higher world, like everything is connected. Nobody's jealous there. Nobody's like, oh, well, you're taking my student. It's only here when you are very devotional to your school that you so feel jealous or you, you feel like uh, bad about people developing in other schools, always in the rival remote. So don't worry if you, if you move on to the next development. You have to have new principles, new illumination strategies, new enlightenment strategies. Therefore, you have sometimes a need for another ray or another temperament to make that initiation available. Like if you go to the fourth initiation, like uh, the level of Jesus crucifixion or Buddha's enlightenment in Buddha Gaya in India, that requires a fourth ray process, like an explosion process, a rupture as they say. So you need that energy to have you that rupture. And that is needed 
from the fourth ray energy which explode with harmony of conflict, harmony of contrast. So you have emotional like turbulence and so on. So when you are in that level, you want a mentor who can understand why you are in turmoil. Why are you having crucifixion? Why are you being punished? Why are you being betrayed? Why are you in a revolution? Why are you very explosive? Because that is the fourth initiation or crucifixion level. So you don't want a great two teacher for that because they will have to preserve you. They want to like enclose you to be safe. That time they have to let you go and like explode on your own and then they will you know, give you a parachute. You cannot like contain that because that is supposed to be a rupture, not a preservation mode teaching. So you have to be explosive. All right, so that is why uh, you keep on moving. But if you have a school that you have not exhausted yet the teachings and you keep on moving, that's gullibility and that's not mastery. It is more like, oh, I want to be this, I want. It's more of your desire. Why do, we, okay, it's like, why do people really need a mentor or even a life coach or a teacher? Because somebody wants to meet a need. Somebody wants to uh, entertain and uh, supply a desire or a passion. Or somebody wants to solve a problem. Or somebody wants to uh, be helped with a crisis. Or somebody wants to be initiated or something. So you see that different needs why we need people who will cuddle us or mentor us. To meet a need, okay, to, uh, to uh, uh, open up and accept inspiration through a desire. Like to help us with our desires. Also to resolve crisis and conflicts. Also to meet a level of development and initiation. So you need these mentors because of certain uh, requirement. Need, desire, crisis and solution problems, and then is higher development and quantum leap. So depending on what you need, the, the being, then you find them with a certain thought form or Visualization to to be attra to be attracted to them, not to attract them in, to be attracted to them. See, the problem is you make a program that you attract the mentor, right? They're bigger than you. It is more difficult for them to be pulled to. You should be pulled to them, like the sun pulling the earth and the planet. It's not the earth pulling the sun. We always have that. It will not evolve that way, and you will not find the mentor by pulling the mentor towards you. You should be pulled by the mentor, not you pulling the mentor. See, that's the mistake of most people in their prayers. I want the mentor to come to me. I want Archangel Gabriel to come to me. I want God to come to me and talk to me. How can that be? The universe coming to you. You're supposed to be inside, right? Okay? All right, any other question? Yes? Master, can you please clarify further why we need a new esoteric mentor if we already have a life coach or a mentor? Well, why do we need then an esoteric mentor if you already have a life mentor or a spiritual mentor? That's a very good question because that can happen to a lot of you who are listening to me now. When you have a spiritual mentor and you are very happy with that person for some time, you're evolving, you have grown a lot, do not hesitate that if that teacher said that, okay, you're done with me or I don't have anything much to teach you except you're going to pay me all the time, because you can meet me every hour, one hour a month, or one hour a week. And yet your question is the same, and the answer is the same. So it means to say you have saturated the relationship, and you're not anymore receptive to the life mentor, because you are not in the same anymore page of wanting to resolve a problem or find a solution. Sometimes you need another ray, another temperament of a mentor that will clash with you sometimes, so that it will push you the limit and then you rupture because that is what you need to break from the preservation mode of status quo or the old ways. Because there's a problem sometimes when you are very casual and very normal to your mentor already because you have been together for years and years and years. You are already anticipating their words, you already like a way of dealing with them, be friendly with them, you have a way of uh, rewarding their needs. So that's the reciprocal feeling of being related you started to get complacent. You started going casual. Sometimes you need another mentor, maybe to jumpstart you again, to dislodge you from the same status quo and complacency or, 
or I would say idle, idleness, so that you will go reset. So sometimes you need an esoteric mentor to reset you, to have an esoteric reset, a spiritual reset, something that will get you to a level where you don't know again yourself and you're not able to predict things. So you need the esoteric part of the mentor. For example, I can be your spiritual mentor, but when I see that you're very complacent, very casual to me, you feel like I'm there predictable and I'm smiling at you, you're eating, we're eating the same food, we're talking the same chakra, and you said, uh -huh. I said, okay. So I can meet you and make you a spiritual reset, spunk you, you clobber your ego, and give you a little you know, jump and kick your butt a little bit, and it dislodge you from the same comfort zone, and you start to ask him that you don't know a lot. Because I have two or three questions you don't you cannot answer, and they think I think it's simple and you cannot answer. Or I can kick your butt and dislodge your ego to realize that you are not a master yet. Or you are not really equipped yet for the next crisis. So when you have a crisis, the soul uses a crisis sometimes to give you an update to be to go back to your sense senses, to go back to your humility. To go back to your, your ability to, to learn and be receptive. So sometimes when you're starting to get mentored for a long time, you're starting to be comfortable. You need that esoteric mentorship. If the same spiritual teacher becomes your esoteric mentor, you will have to have another relationship that will propel a new way of studying, a new way of dealing with a mentor, not in the same space, not in a comfortable space, but in an awkward space where you see the mentor as a mentor, not just a friend. It dislodges you. So you need an esoteric mentorship, not just a mentor. With the same mentor, you can be an esoteric mentor from a spiritual mentor or a spiritual teacher. You can bring a new face into the, the relationship and be esoterically mentored into a new level where you have to learn new things again. You have to study the basics again in a different light. You need to study to, to follow certain rules that you thought you have mastered, but you are still a kindergarten there. Or you are now dealing with a karma and a crisis that you did not expect because you thought you already finished your karma. And then it came back. And so you can see that reminders can come from different crises. can be having conflict. It can be an accident. It can be a big problem with other people. It can be a death of a relative that you did not expect. Or it can come in a certain drama where there be a dark light of the soul coming and you will start to feel that you need esoteric mentoring than just not spiritual teachings because you can get just these field teachings which you do not master but you just listen to the law of karma oh yeah i know that already the law of economy i know that already the seven cycles of life i know that already so there's such thing as knowing and that's it are you bringing a deep dive into the subject matter by going into a holistic approach to life using all the facets and philosophies of the teachings you have learned so that again is an integration of the different teachings to use as a tool to solve a problem, to bring a new perspective into dealing with crisis. Therefore, you need an ascetic mentor to give you new laws, new principles, new experiences that are needed for your next jump. Because you have to disrupt. If you're falling a saturated curve, you need to jump again by falling down and jump. You need that disruption curve to be able to go up again, not going down. All right, so you understand that esoteric mentor is sometimes needed, even from the same spiritual teacher or spiritual mentor. You need that esoteric mentoring facet of that relationship to be able to jumpstart yourself into a new level. Okay, like there are times, like saying Christian teachings, there are times that Jesus was speaking as a Jesus of Nazareth to his apostles, They're like, you know, talking, eating, and doing things, but there's a time that he has to disrupt at the level of the Christ's overshadowing to become miraculous or to produce miracles to jumpstart that. Oh, we're not bodies, you know. You are my apostle, we eat the same fish, we uh, ate the same bread, we ate in the, and sleep in the same uh, house. But let me tell you that I'm Jesus the Christ, and you're still apostle. See, so he shows the miracles. He shows him new things that, oh my God, I forgot that you are Jesus the Christ. Or I, I, I didn't expect that you are more powerful than normal. And that's why Jesus said, who am I, Peter? He said, who am I, who am I, who am I? See, that's a simple question, but how come they were with him for a long time and he's asking again, 
who am I, Peter? Whom do you think I am? Because maybe they, they, they think that it's Jesus of Nazareth with, with a sandal walking with them and, and, and you know, preaching. They become complacent, you see. So sometimes you have to be both who is this teacher? Who is the teacher behind this teacher? Who is really this being? Is this being really this and that? So when you start to ask these questions about the teacher, you will say, how much do I really know from this teacher? How much do I know about this teacher? Who is this teacher really? So when I ask this thing from my teachers, I know that I know something in them, but I don't know some other aspects of them. Then I start to realize that I need to do more homeworks to, to study. All right, any other question? Yes, Master. Uh, how do you find an esoteric mentor? And could one qualify to be an esoteric mentee if one did not have prior coaching or mentoring? So are you qualified to have an esoteric mentor if you have not practically prepared? Or how do you find an esoteric mentor? Usually, your soul will prepare you to have a crisis or prepare you to have a big problem or a certain condition in life that you're lost and you start to ask questions and then you go to a spiritual healer who will give you some healings and then after the stress is gone after the crisis is solved then you're done with the life coach or the healer right but then after being healed you said it's not finished yet something is yearning in me that I'm looking for something deeper this time. I want, to look, I want to look for my purpose. I want to look for another kind of life compared to where I came from. So you're starting to look for some teachings which might involve healing, uh, esoteric psychology, certain preparations that are you know, available in the marketplace about yoga, meditation, kundalini, the soul. So you're starting to look for teachings and workshops and you happen to find workshops online like ours or you might go to Deepak Chopra for these simple things, or you go to Sadhguru for re-engineering, you go to The Art of Living with Shishi Ravi Shankar of India, or you, you found the uh, uh, Sai Baba Ashram in different places, and you started to study certain mystical things, or you went to China to study martial arts, or Qigong, or Tai Chi, and after five years, you're still looking for, I want something more than movements. I want to study really what is the one giving me inspiration internally. Who is the voice inside them? But martial arts will not give you that. So you start to look for a spiritual teacher who specializes in, say, spiritual psychology, something that can explain what you're feeling, what you're missing, why are you getting lost, why are you still yearning for more, yet you have studied many workshops already, you have joined many spiritual groups, you have been a yoga instructor, you have been a, a Tai Chi uh, student, you have been in too many things. You have gone to all places from Zen to Buddhism to Kabbalah and yet you're still, a, it's not a complete set of information that does not give you what it means to become a spiritual being. These are only subject matters which is not a curriculum to find who you are. It gives you some perspective, but it does not define a complete point of view about who you are. Then you might have studied theosophy and studied a little bit the chakras, about genesis of creation and masters and so on. Then you went to Alice Bailey, you studied esoteric psychology to Alice Bailey's book, but they're hard to understand because they were written in Old English and it was written in a different way and without preparation of the terminologies it's hard to connect all the dots then you're tired and then you're starting to have another crisis because you say oh i'm not satisfied i don't know if i belong to religion or i have to be a buddhist or i have to be a yogi and you got sick of cancer or you had some problems get divorced or get bankrupt or you don't want to work in the same company anymore and you were not able to find another good job so all of these things of being lost is an impulse of the soul to look for answers. And some answers are hidden in books or in mentoring. So you went again for healing and you may, might have met our facilitators and healers on the dark night of the soul, like my book. And then from there you understand that it's partially the dark night of the soul syndrome. And it's partially 
a depression because you're tired, your energy is depleted, and so on, you're financially broke, and you started to feel that you are incapacitated to continue if you will not find your life's purpose. Then you met one of my trainer or one of my specialists who told about my teachings, which is esoteric psychology, understanding your micro relationship to the macro God or macro cosmos or universe. So you decided to follow my esoteric 101, the seven philosophies of wisdom. Then you go to maybe uh, my workshop on Be Well Science and you're starting to understand the nature of the chakras and the auras determining your con concepts and consciousness. Then you probably attended a workshop that gives you the idea of the soul or you have read my book that gives you the nature of the soul and then you got my third eye book and you want to attend the enlightened life retreat of the third eye initiation so now these are all pegging you towards looking for higher meaning in life through the teachings the teachings give you more the zest and vitality to have some kind of understanding about life the energy and so on and then you're not looking who you are anymore because you're starting to find that the answer is more of self-knowledge about who you are is about first the facets of energy, the chakras, the soul, the nature of the soul and spirit and the personality and the ego and your intra-relationship to your soul and your interrelationship with other beings and with an ashram if you're looking for a higher membership. And then you found me or found my senior mentors in the ashram and you started to find that your dark night of the soul is a drama imposed by the soul for you to find the esoteric mentor in us and my book can be the esoteric mentor reading the book alone is esoteric mentoring if it were the more advanced book like the equine invocation the third eye the told rules to achieve enlightenment even the hidden dangers of meditation even from success fulfillment and so on so even my books can be your esoteric mentor if you don't know anything about it or partially know about it but then you deepen the concepts of that thing you want to learn and you broaden the dimensionality of those concepts and they understand yourself as a personality with the mind emotions your aura and physical inside the soul which is atma buddhi and mind the higher mind and then inside the bigger substance called the monad or the spirit and then the absolute so you're starting to really know who you are not just what you are you're starting to forget that you are not just a student you're a disciple in life looking for meaning through service enlightenment and through pursuit to evolutionary uh, development now you don't have to look for who you are you will discover it yourself because the mentor is not always a physical mentor immediately it's about the subjects that are taught by aesthetic mentors that you first have to go through. Without the preparation, the mentor will not appear immediately to be available. Or even you find them, there's always something that will not make you meet these mentors until you're ready. And you, I will tell you that if I were the aesthetic mentor, I would expect my students to be really hungry, to be receptive, to be more aligned to ask the right question and to search for more meaningful service. Without the service component of learning, you are just a student, not a disciple. As sort of mentors are looking for disciples to mentor. They will not waste their time mentoring somebody who's a student. That can be done by reading the book of the mentor, or that can be done by senior specialists and mentors, not the master esoteric mentor, or not the esoteric mentor. Because you have to pass to certain stages by which you will prepare yourself to be really hungry, to be more aligned, to have the right question, to have the right necessities and needs for group work and development. Therefore, those are qualifications by which you can qualify to be seen and minded by the esoteric mentor. That esoteric mentor-mentee relationship becomes partly a discipleship. Otherwise, you just read the book and you get the answers through information. But when you're starting to be esoteric and mentored, you're starting to be immersed in the aura of the mentor, and there's an osmosis which accelerates your growth, not only through words, not only through projects, that soaking in the energy and substance of the mentee, mentor is the accelerant. It's like being soaked in an ocean of substance, of light, power, and love, 
there is an acceleration of development that even one year with that as a mentor is like lifetimes of learning and growth. Therefore, there's a substitute once you find is the mentor and then you stick to that. Otherwise, you will, once the energy is pulled out, you drop to a certain level where there's no substance to make you expand and to grow very fast. Quantum leap is the key to growth. Your one year with a esoteric mentor is more than lives of normal mentoring or development. That's why it is irreplaceable. It is not the same as being taught as a student with workshop after workshop. Being soaked in the substance is different from learning from one source to the next like that. Being inside, embraced by the substance because you're allowed to be inside the substance because the mentor will allow you to be inside the substance, accelerated by the frequency and then expanded to the dimensionality of the teacher's facets and you're dealing with answers that are dealing with multi-level of intelligence, not one level. So your understanding is not one level understanding of intelligence. There'll be facets of intelligence that makes you understand and soak into the answers of those questions. So sometimes you run out of question because you're already inside the answer, the substance. The meaning is already inside your consciousness, so you cannot bring a duality. It's like being one. All right, so I think that that is uh, as far as I, if you need initiation or jump, you need an ascetic mentor, not just a teacher. So a lot of you with spiritual teachers, do not be afraid to jump and look for your ascetic mentors to jump into a level of development that you cannot achieve by learning slowly. It's a jump, it's a sudden jump. It's a drastic leap of consciousness. As they say, it's a leapfrog sometimes, as they call it. All right, any other question? Master, when does a mentor lose interest uh, or disqualify a mentee and even possibly abandon the mentee-mentor relationship? Or so mentor when does a mentee relationship? get disqualified or kicked out or abandoned in the level where they should be? You, you have to understand that uh, the substance, the time, the energy, and the priceless uh, ness of the presence of the mentor and the aesthetic mentor has to be earned. It cannot just like, uh, yeah, you might be physically available talking to the mentor, but not really soak in because you are not qualified, you are not prepared. So you need purity of substance. You need to be cleaner. You need to be vice free. You need to be aligned more towards the teachings. You need to be prepared with more esoteric psychology, esoteric science, third eye, and all the other preparations if you can. You need to be healed a lot so that your past lives should not be in the way, on the way to learn. You need to be able to align your consciousness so that you do not understand in a more inclined way, more upright way. You need to be looking at the rightness of the answers, not just being correct in the answers. You need to have more than one or two levels of intelligence. Like you have the instincts intelligence, you have the emotional intelligence, you have the concrete mental intelligence, you have the abstract mental intelligence, you have the psychic and intuitive intelligence, you have the wisdom intelligence, and you have this spiritual and divine intelligence. Those levels are available for a higher master and a specific mentor to soak you in. So however you want to, live, to, to be involved, you need to have at least one or two or three, rather you're wasting the mentor's time if you have only instincts or logic or emotions. You need to be multifaceted so when you soak yourself to the substance, you are gathering as much experience and information and knowledge by multifaceted absorption rather than linear absorption. So when you are not prepared, the teacher will see you being lazy, being complacent. You are not doing your homework and you're not producing well in your projects that were assigned to you in the mentor, or you're not following through and you're thinking that you're a baby. One of the things that Morris is to medicine like is like a babysitting job. You're not ready. You drive back, go back to a life coach or a healer or a top therapist if you are just wanting to be heard. Sometimes you need to be spanked, you need to be clobbered and be enduring and patient to learn rather than being hurt. If you get hurt by just a shout of the mentor's voice or just being pushed a little bit and you start to say that you're going to quit because you know, you know the teacher's too cool, you're starting to have uh, the criticisms against the teacher's uh, style, 
It means to say you're not ready because you're pushing. The more you push and criticize, the more you get pushed out because the energy is shielded and strong. So you push like this, you get passed also out. Something like that. So if you are starting to criticize the teacher, you're out. When you start to be lazy, you're out. When you are not following up anymore on your homeworks and your supposed to be your projects, you're out. You're not just out physically. You, your energy is so far that you cannot grasp the substance. Or you cannot be protected as much. Another one is when you are like a speechal baby. You want to be babysitted. You want to be cuddled. You want to be always tapping the shoulder when you do things. These are a lot not readiness. Or when you're saturated your, your development and you get lazy again and you say, oh yeah, I'm really good already. I don't have to learn more. You're done. The spiritual mentor or the ascetic mentor have gone through a process as diligent, as industrious, as intelligent, as talented, as hardworking, as intelligent working as you can imagine. So that is the path. You didn't want anybody against those qualities. So once you're against those qualities, they have been invited to become a master mentor, you are not qualified. Because when they were students, they expect you to behave like them as very diligent, very industrious, very aligned, and not wishing things but doing things. Action, master of action, not master of promises. Secondly, is they were diligent, that's why they become masters. They were very intelligently motivated, aligned, that's why they become masters. So they expect you to go to the mastery requirement, not otherwise, nothing different. Otherwise, they know that to be a master or to be a mentor, to be enlightened is a certain degree of sacrifice, certain degree, a lot of discomforts that you embrace that comes from the preparation, that comes from the initiation, that comes with the preparation of higher development. So they expect you to behave as such that you mature that you're seasoned enough to be promoted. If they see that you're a weakling, people-minded, wishy-washy, they say, okay, you're not prepared for this, so go back to the normal steps. And you don't even know you're out already, they just like cut, cut the opportunity, because they don't want to waste their time. So don't waste the time with the mentor. Do not do wrong things that are not told to you not to do. So there are don'ts in the relationship. There are also rules in the process of higher development. It's not about giving you money. The mentor doesn't need you as much as you need the mentor. So if it's money that you want to buy the, the, the mentor, the mentor is not a grocery to buy. It's not a shopping cart. So you need more than mentor than the mentor needs you. So you have to be humble. So that is why humility is much needed which is sometimes not being weak, to be receptive, to be coachable, to be, men to be mentored uh, without hesitation. Because when the mentor will say something, you always get hurt. Aha, the mentor said, you just go to the coach, don't go to a mentor. You need to be a little bit enduring, patient, waiting, at the same time not too demanding. Because the mentor knows if you need another subject to learn. If you have not mastered a lot, they will not give you a subject. So it's not a workshop. It's about experiential training. It's about doing rather than promising. So the easiest way to lose a mentor is to have a big ego, to not to be proud, not to be receptive anywhere, not to be coachable, and to be uh, lazy, to have vices, to have violations of many rules that are repeatedly done, uh, don't do this, and also to be misaligned. Even in the Christian faith, one of the biggest sins is pride. Not proud of being arrogant. Misalignment of the ego doesn't want to be receptive to the divine rule of God or divinity. Once you misalign, whatever happens, it will not sink. You need to align back. That's why sometimes they leave you alone. They don't even want to talk about anything you're asking. Say, okay, that's good. Okay, do it. You know, like they will just keep on doing it. Do it. They will not anymore discuss anything. So you just go, keep on going. Do what you do. Until you really, really cry and, and really <laughs> fail and then you need another like jump start again. They will delegate it to somebody else. Once you abandon your duty, that is the worst. If a mentee, mentor gives you a spiritual duty, a dharmic duty, and you abandon it or you did not do it, that is probably the greatest violation. 
You can have a mistake of big ego from time to time, but as long as you don't abandon your spiritual duty assigned to you, if you were a pillar, a post in the building, you cannot abandon that because others will fall with you. Therefore, it's very important that if you're given an assignment, you have to do it as diligent as possible, as good as possible, and as aligned as possible, because that's the measure what they give you another responsibility to grow. The muscle building of virtues and development anyway is the service component. So if they do not give you any more service, they do not give you new assignments, you are really in trouble. It means to say you did not do good in your past assignment, that's why they're not giving any more. Because additional service, a heavier load of accountability and responsibility is the reward of doing great things if it were a necessary mentorship relationship. Giving you more jobs because you have done a lot of good jobs is the reward, is the price of doing great. But if they don't give you any more anything, you're flat, you're doing the same thing for a long time, it means to say you are not yet ready to be given another job. Therefore, that's the sign that your checklist says, I'm not doing enough. I'm not good enough. All right, so one way of fulfilling the relationship is to follow the rules of the relationship, to do your assignments, to express all the life and service assigned to you, and to be the pillar of that work or project. Therefore, the mentor will give you the power to even expand your power and your development. So aesthetic mentors have different levels also. There are ones that will bring you to the first step of self-mastery. Then the one that brings you to the middle step. So we have also in the group, for example, spiritual mentors, blood mentors that are getting ready to make you balance your life from success or from balance to fulfillment mentors. So that is in Wilga, our other institute, the Wisdom Institute for Leadership and Global Advancement has that line. You have a self-care specialist and facilitator certification. And you have the balanced life strategies which can give you also the mentoring. And you have also the self-mastery mentor which gives you the enlightenment processes. And also we have also the uh, personality and productivity profiler specialist with profile your five years of life, your trinity, your what type of leader you are, profile your performance and, and your balance. Uh, as a specialization in Wilga. And there's another one called the Balanced Life Mentor and Strategists, which gives you to balance your five years of life, five levels of intelligence, and other aspects of your life. So we have a lot of mentoring program that makes you, gets you certified to be able to mentor at certain level of specialization until you become a self-development mentor or senior specialist. In my other school, the B Life Institute for Higher Consciousness, BIHC, you're given a, a healing specialization and different specializations until you become a senior specialist, which includes the healing mentorship. And then you go to third eye level mentorship and there, Esoteric psychologist, mentorship, and esoteric science, spiritual technology, and you have the divine alchemy and mentorship. So there are different lines with very esoteric aspect of training, and this one is the more esoteric, exoteric in Wilga. And you become a mentor eventually. First, you can be a specialist and a life coach until you become a strategist and mentor and you become a self-development mentor, a self-care mentor, or self-mastery mentor. So these are things that we offer so you can be developed in that fashion. Okay, so these are things that I want to explain to you today. So you see the broadness and the breadth and depth of what we are talking about in mentoring. Mentoring is usually like a generic word for most people. But if you start to go deep into the more advanced souls mentoring, then you need specific requirements to be mentored at a certain level of development. Anything else? Master, how can those who want to be mentored start? Is there a way for to become mentees in your organization? Is there a way to become a mentee or to be mentored by us in our organization? How do we start? 
as I said earlier, first, you might need to become uh, a patient if you're sick or if you're depressed, if you're gonna sleep, if you are lost, if you have a crisis, you first engage in the heal plan or in a fashion where you get healed first. When you are healed, a lot of peeling of consciousness happen and you're starting to elucidate many things you need which you did not recognize before except only your illness, your cancer, your COVID. But once you are healed for a few times, you started to unfold that the healing process is not just healing, it is unfoldment, it's self-discovery, it is more of searching for higher meaning in life and fi finding your purpose and finding who you are. Then as you finish all the healings and coaching by our uh, mentors or by our special specialists and facilitators and trainers, after they teach you a certain advanced meditation and and techniques, you start to open up your, your soul. Your energies are cleaner. Your soul can come in more readily, inspiring you to ask the right questions and search for more meaning and find your purpose in life. So now you add another service in our level where you are employing finding your purpose, how to balance your life, how to bring yourself from success to fulfillment. So you're asking a balanced life strategy session. So we'll enroll you there and uh, Balanced Life Strategies, which is also uh, Balanced Life Mentor, will give you the gradings and chartings of many things. That is already enrolling into the mentoring program as far as Balancing Life Strategies are concerned. Then you might want to be profiled on your Life Tools and Productivity Index called the Seven Cycles Chart, how to do things at the right auspicious time and then you have also the eight types of human design who are you what type are you and you have also the uh, uh, manifestation programs on how to manifest faster by the five laws of manifestation so these also include the feng shui how to improve your your wisdom your feng shui capacity to be in the right place in the right time so you enroll in many of our mentoring program these are already in mentoring program. Without knowing, they are bringing a, a quantum leap of consciousness by knowing the seven cycles of life chart, your own cycles, your own karma with your parents, the karma of your children with you. By knowing what type of human being you are you, like the design of your consciousness, you know your strength, your weaknesses, your sense of fulfillment, your causes of anger and fear. You can regulate your life, you can regulate your emotions, you can sharpen your mind. You can heal yourself faster and you can awaken the power of your soul faster. So these are all mentoring program. And then you will start to go into a life of success towards balance. So you will be charting your material life versus future life, your trinity of success and enlightenment, your five years of life to balance, your five levels of intelligence to grade yourself, where are your levels of intelligence which is more developed and so on. So these are profiling mentoring, which you need to understand who you are and what you are and differentiate them. What you are is different from who you are. You need to know both what you are and who you are. And finding your real self, your true nature and your soul. So these are things you already engage in mentoring. Now, as you evolve, you probably want to, oh, I want to have a third eye initiation or I want to have an enlightened life strategy mentoring. So you enroll in our workshops. In the workshop, we have group mentoring, not just individual. And then in group mentoring, you find your classmates who are your classmates of spiritual development and initiation. And that's where you started to find really who you are with respect to the group, with respect to the ashram, or with respect to the duty in life that you need to fulfill. And you find your meaningful purpose at the time. And you're starting to find your soul. And your soul finds you and you become more united with your divine self. And that is where mentoring starts to go to esoteric mentoring. More advanced growth initiation that is faster than normal, where you find me and my, my master mentors or my senior mentors who will guide you step by step, partner with you in projects, assign you a dharmic duty to be accountable to humanity and to the world. And you start to be in a self-mastery path where you need a self-mastery mentor and a certain mentor of that 
And that's where you started to really become a master and then initiate eventually. So these are things available in our program. Now, if you're looking for an esoteric mentor somewhere else, if you are an advanced spiritual teacher who is very knowledgeable about esoteric laws, higher principles, psychology, an esoteric psychology of one, more than one life psychology, these are the mentors you have to look for if you want to jump. Do not look for a mentor that's similar to you. Like if our Mother Teresa type, and I need a mentor, sometimes the best is not the Dalai Lama type, similar to me. Sometimes you need an Einstein mentor to bring you the gaps of your development. Sometimes you bring a Moses mentor or the warrior mentor to bring the power in me which is lacking. So sometimes your best mentor is not always the similar one. For a very strong character as a warrior type of disciple, sometimes you need the Mother Teresa mentor to augment the love in you so that you do not misuse your power. Or you need the Einstein mentor to bring you the intelligence to be able to use your power. Or a strategist mentor to give you the strategy to use your power. Or a tactician to be able to guide you with the more skillful use of your power. Then you can have a powerful mentor so that they will show you the more powerful way to be more powerful. So I have these mentors around me before. That's why I was very, very, uh, I would say, gifted in the sense of many advanced mentors that give me a completeness of my earlier, uh, I would say, development until I found that other development are necessary for my next level. So I had to invoke advanced non-physical mentors and then eventually I went into a different level. So these are all but experiences in my life that I want to share to you today because if you spoke of mentor and coach and speech teacher, most of them are interchanged, the mentors. They are not the same. It's misconstrued to say a life coach is a life mentor. No, they are not the same. Where the life coach cannot handle, the life mentor begins. So after you exhausted the ability and the talent and the energy of a life coach, sometimes you need to go to a life mentor. After you exhaust the coaching of a life mentor, then you need to go to a spiritual mentor. And after that, you need to go to an esoteric mentor and a master mentor. These are the different rounds by which mentoring can be executed and implemented. So if you want to discover if you need a coaching, mentoring, healing, or a specialist to guide you, you can always access our, our uh, free online assessment program for 50 to 20 minutes. We will see ready if you need coaching, healing, mentoring, or you need just to study the workshops, or you just go to a, a more enlightened retreat. All right, I think uh, our time has been exhausted by talking so much about the facets, the dimensionality of mentoring, the different levels of mentoring, the different requirements to be a mentor, and many other aspects of this topic. I hope I've given you enough information and facets by which you can see, do you need a coach? Do you need a healer? Do you need a special teacher? Or do you need a special mentor out of the special teacher or another mentor called esoteric mentor? You can take both the special teacher to be your life mentor to be also your spiritual mentor or teacher and you also can be promoted to have a relationship of esoteric mentoring with the same teacher but in most cases you sometimes need an aggregate of experience that different ways different temperaments of mentoring should be done so that you will be able to get exp exposed to different facets of power love and light mentoring lucky if you have a mentor who can be synthesized that can deliver you the love aspect the light aspect and the power aspect. And then you stay with those mentors because they are very rare to find. Otherwise you have to hunt in many lives, many mentors will give you a horizontal exposure to life until you're ready for the big game. Good luck to everyone. I hope we will uh, get you into our uh, free, I would say, unfoldment and discovery session, what you need from us and what service you need. And if you are qualified eventually to become a mentor yourself, from a life mentor, coach, from a healer mentor, from a specialist mentor, and even the Wilka mentoring program is also being offered. And I think we have one coming 
in uh, August 7, we have a two weeks program, the theory and, and science behind uh, different self-development program to become a mentor and to become a specialist. So we welcome you also to ask you information about this, including our July, I would say, 16. We have a July 16 uh, certification for uh, healing depression and anxiety, also for COVID and its comorbidity, and also how to teach uh, meditation and, and exercises for fatigue and stress management and vitality management, and called the rescue level. So good luck to everyone, and see you soon. Namaskar.